Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, I've got a full face get ready with me makeup tutorial for you that's based on a look that I wore on an Instagram story and an Instagram post a couple of weeks ago and you guys went crazy for it and asked me for a tutorial, so I'm doing it today. I'm calling this one a glowy, natural, skin-like makeup look because that's why I think everyone responded to it so well because it was really just glowy and dewy. And I think what made the difference in this one is that I was using my new Holy Grail foundation which has a nice luminous finish, but I also used a cream blush and a cream contour and I think that just kind of adds to the overall kind of youthful dewy look of the makeup plus the eyeshadow palette I used was really natural and I think it gave a sophisticated yet youthful look so anyway this is the whole look that we're going to be doing today I love it and I'm so happy that you guys loved it too and asked for the tutorial so let's get started as always I have on my sunscreen already I've got on my holy grail combo which is the Elta MD UV element SPF 44 mixed with a little bit of Polish Choice Super Light SPF 30 and that gives me like the perfect shade for me. Um, so let me clip back my hair and zoom you in a little closer so you can see what I'm doing and we'll get this little makeup party started. All right, I'm going to be using my new Holy Grail foundation, which is the Estee Lauder Futurist. I wear this in a combination of colors because they don't have a perfect shade match for me. So this is 2W1 Dawn that I'm going to mix with a little bit of 3N1. But hopefully you have a perfect shade match for yourself. If you don't, you can also pick up the Ulta foundation adjusting drops and mix in a couple drops of the darker one or the lighter one. That also comes with a nice little palette to mix it on. Actually, where is my little palette? Let me get it. I generally don't use any primer with this, so I'm just going to go ahead and put it right on my face. If you find that you need a primer with it, go ahead and apply your primer. Um, but I'm just going to take the little Ulta palette. I'm going to put one and a half pumps onto the palette. I don't want to use a ton of foundation so that I can maintain a nice youthful sheer look to the foundation. I don't want it to be too built up, too heavy looking. Not that this ever looks really heavy or cakey. And I'm just going to add about one drop of 3N1 or you would use some foundation mix-in, whatever you have that you like. I'm going to be applying that today with my BK Beauty 101 brush. This is my favorite foundation brush of all time. I'm just going to start in the center of my face, pop on a little bit of the foundation, and blend it in with the brush. And I just use kind of short patting motions. I don't really do a lot of like dragging foundation. With the patting you kind of get the natural stippling look from the brush rather than any streak marks. Not that this brush ever gives you any streak marks because it doesn't, but I feel like just pressing the foundation into my skin just helps to give it a little bit more of a natural look. So just doing the same thing and of course I have what I call my texture ripply skin down here on my chin. It's just like lots of little micro wrinkles. And so in order to really get those covered, I like kind of jam the brush into them. So I kind of make, you know, stretch my skin out, make funny faces, really like grind it down in there. Cause what helps with the wrinkles is if you be sure to get your foundation down into the depths of your wrinkles and not just on the tops and skipping over the depths because then the depths look darker. So this way, your wrinkles aren't accentuated if you really get it to all the levels of the wrinkles. I know. Wouldn't it be nice to not have to talk about how we put our foundation on our wrinkles, but <laughs> wrinkles are part of life and got to deal with them. Again, I have some textured skin right up here, so I always just make sure to kind of jam it in there so that it gets down in the deeper parts. This part I call my orange peel skin. <laughs> And I like to really rub it from all directions to make sure that it gets in there. And then I go over it with the brush to just really stamp it and press it onto the skin so it looks nice and skin-like and natural. And that, I find, gives me a nice natural finish. Just need a little more right here. 
Can you guys hear the wind howling? It is so cold here today. It's May 8th and our high today is going to be like 42 degrees. I can't believe how cold it is. So I'm wearing a sweater in May. I hope it's warmer where you guys are. And then I'm just going to grab the little bit that's left on my palette and bring this down my neck just to even that up so we don't have a hard line where the foundation stops. Yeah, I feel like this is a little light. Hmm. Then I'm going to go in with my concealer. I'm using Lancome Mackie Complet today. This is my favorite concealer. I find that it looks the best on my crow's feet and my wrinkles, and it's not drying. This is the hydrating concealer that Lancome makes, and it never feels dry under my eyes, and it never really looks dry or doesn't look cakey. So I just put it on with this little lip brush. I'll link all the brushes that I'm using in the information box below the video, as well as all the makeup. So I just press this in using my finger. I find the warmth of my finger really helps to press it into the skin and help it to spread a little further. I kind of go for the least coverage that I can get away with under my eyes because using more concealer, of course, will make your under eyes look heavier and cakier. So just gonna contour a little bit down my nose. So I just take the tiniest little bit of this and I draw just one straight line from the bridge of my nose right down to the tip. And then I'm gonna take a little bit more. And I just kind of make these little arrow shape here and connect that. Then I'm gonna go back in with the BK 101 brush and just pounce over that to blend it. Next, I'm gonna set my under eye concealer. I'm gonna use It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores HD Powder. This is my favorite. I just sprinkle a little bit out into the cap. Then I take my e.l.f. blush brush and swirl it in there, picking up some powder. I tap it off so most of the powder goes back into the cap. And then I just press it under my eyes. And I also set kind of my T-zone where I tend to be a little shiny and where the makeup, because it does have a luminous finish, it accentuates my pores and texture. So I just take the littlest bit of the powder and place it where I have either textured skin or in large pores. Now I'm just gonna brush off any excess powder that I have on my face. Let's go ahead with our contour. That day I used my NYX Wonder Stick. This is in the Universal shade. And I just take it and do a little scribble, 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 scribble. Any place that I want to contour my face. So I do cheekbones, always do jawline. And then I do a little bit on my nose. I try to make this wider bump here look a little narrower by putting a little of that right on top. Contouring that in. And then I put a little bit just on the underside of my nose. And sometimes I'll do a little bit right here and here just to kind of make that look like it goes in a little bit so, so it's straight and then like a cute little button, which is not how my nose is actually made, but I can make it look that way with makeup. To blend those I use the Real Techniques Foundation Paddle Brush and I just pretty much work in circular motions working this up towards my hairline. This blends in so easily. I just love this for the contour. And then I just rub over the edges of it so there's no hard edges. I come back here, blend this up into my hairline and then pull it down a little bit and rub that back and forth to blend that out. I don't like it when the contour comes all the way down here and like dips under your cheek. On me, that doesn't look very good, so you have to kind of do your contour according to your face. Bring it in as far as you want. And then of course, have to blend these guys because you don't want two little dirty looking things there like you were eating chocolate and got chocolate all over your face. I've done that before. And then for the nose, be really careful with the nose. 
make sure not to move it around too much. For the blush, I use Glossier Cloud Paint in Beam. A lot comes out, so you have to be really, oh, careful. <laughs> there we go. A lot did come out. There it is. So just grab a little bit of that with my finger. I tap it in there, and then I kind of tap it off on the back of my hand, because a little bit of this does go a long way. So I'm going to start up higher on my cheekbone and bring it forward. So I just start like patting that on there and bring it forward. And then I just pat in little circles to blend it. I want to blend it down into that contour and up onto my temple. I'm just going to grab a little more, put that on the front of my cheek. This is just the most beautiful, sheer, natural looking blush. I think this is the thing that really got you guys on Instagram that day because it was kind of one of the newer products that I had used in that makeup look. Everything else was like makeup that I'd been wearing for a while and that you guys had seen, but for some reason this one just caught your eye. Isn't that just so pretty? And then match it up on the other side. As you can see, it's so sheer, like I'm only using about half of what I put out on the back of my hand, but it's just giving me the most beautiful, sheer, lit from within wash of color. I just love it. That's just something new that I bought about a month ago and have been using it like crazy ever since. And with that, you don't really need highlighter because it does have its little glowiness. So it gives you that cheek pop that makes you look like you've had filler when you haven't. And yeah, mm -hmm, just love it. All right, is the face done? I guess the face is done. We can move on to the eyes. So for my eyelid primer, I'm gonna use my Holy Grail primer, which is Fenty Amplify Primer. Just going to swipe a little bit of this on each lid. This will help you to blend your eyeshadow better. It will keep it from creasing. And I just pat and press it in. The eyeshadow palette that I had used is Tartlet in Bloom. And I was a late convert to this palette. I had looked at it for years and years, never bought it, never bought it, finally got it. I'm so happy I did. Now it's like my every single day go-to palette. I love it. Look at the shades in there. It has a mix of warms and cools and mattes and shimmers, but they're all just so pretty and wearable, but you can make the most gorgeous looks with it. I'm going to use the It Cosmetics 112 eyeshadow shader brush, and I'm going to go into the lightest shade in the palette, Charmer. Pick up a little of that, both sides of the brush, pack that on the movable part of my lid from the crease down to my eyelashes, kind of going up into that circle created by your eyeball and pressing it on there. This is such a pretty sheer color. I'm gonna do both eyes instead of just doing one or speeding through it. So we'll just do this together. Then I always am careful to really blend it in the corner because uh, you know, older eyes, there are like little micro wrinkles in the corner here, and I find if I don't like really just close down my eye most of the way, lift my eyebrow up, and just really rub that in there, that I do get a little skipping over those tiny wrinkles. And if I don't look in my 10x mirror super close, I won't notice them, and I'll be walking around with them all day, which, you know, these days nobody's really seeing you, but you want your makeup to look nice for the people who are seeing you. This is a matte shade, so I'm just going to take a little bit of this and just put it up under my brow bone for a little brow highlight, but I don't want a lot up there, but it helps to reflect a little light without using a shimmer color up there. Then I'm going to use my BK Beauty 202 brush and I'm going to go into the second color down here, which is Flower Child. This color is so pale, but it's so perfect for just doing that subtle transition deep in the crease. So I'm just going to swirl that on in the crease. And this is so light that you don't really have to worry about going too far above the crease. And where this is a bigger brush, um, it's okay because it's a light color. It just has such a nice effect to it. I don't know what it is about this color. 
it almost is too light to really do anything, but yet it does so much, right? So it just gives you like a more subtle gradation to your crease color. Instead of just going in with one darker color that sometimes can look a little harsh, this just creates the most beautiful, like soft gradation. And then just put a little bit extra up above to start making that hood recede. Then I went in with the Wayne Goss number 19 brush and this shade right here in the middle of the palette, Smarty Pants. And I start deep in the crease at the outer corner and I drag it down onto my eyelid, down to the eyelashes. And I just kind of want to build up some color here. These eyeshadows are so nice and sheer. They're so easy to work with, especially if you're like a beginner or you're a little heavy handed. It's really hard to put these eyeshadows on too heavy because they are so lovely and sheer. So I'm just gonna basically place that. I'm not gonna use the brush to blend it out. I'm pretty much just placing it with this brush and then I'll use a bigger clean brush to blend it. So I'm doing the same thing, jamming it deep into the crease, dragging it down to my eyelashes at a little bit of an angle and go in for a little bit more. And I'm gonna put it deep in the crease and just make tiny little circles out there. I'm not really even moving the brush around that much, like I'm not doing any blending. And I'm just bringing it back and forth from the left to the right to about halfway across my eyelid. I'm gonna blend that out with the Wayne Goss number 16 brush. And this one I never dip into the palette. This is always my clean blender. So I'm just gonna start at the same place that I started and just use bigger circular motions to blend that around onto my eyelid, a little bit up onto the hood. Ooh, that wind is howling. We actually had snow this morning. Can you believe it? Like it's May 8th and we're having snow in Massachusetts and the high today is going to be 36. So weird winter vortex here, but hopefully it'll be gone in a few days. I got my patio furniture out last weekend. Anybody see my Insta story on that? It was so beautiful here. It was 70 degrees last weekend. Got out all my patio furniture <laughs> and now it's snowing. Like, meh. That's the way it is here. Next up, I'm going to go in with my Sigma Lid Shader E56. This is a flat brush and I'm going to pick up the grayish, topish shimmer color here called Rocker. I'm going to just pick that up on one side of the brush only because I'm going to use the other side for the lighter shade down here in a minute. Uh oh, I just <laughs> forgot which side was which. Okay, got it back. Um, all right, so I'm just going to pick up some of that and I'm going to place it over where I put Smarty Pants at the outer corner. And I'm just going to press and drag this down from the deepest part of the crease to my eyelashes. And I'm going to bring that about halfway across and then I'm going to flip the brush over and go into Funny Girl. And I'm going to do the same thing with Funny Girl right next to where I placed Rocker. I'm just going to press and drag that. And you can see that very pretty sheen to the very inside corner but I don't want to get any of this down into my under eye concealer because that's a recipe for magnifying your wrinkles. So you want to be sure to keep it up on the lid and just press and place it there. And then just use that brush to blend the two of them together right in the center. If you don't have a flat brush like that, you can just use your finger. So I'm just going to grab some of rocker with my finger. And sometimes you get better payout with the shimmer colors using your finger. So here's an alternate way to do it. If you don't have that kind of a brush, you just use the same motions. And these are very subtle shimmer colors. They don't have any real glitter to them, so they're very wearable for day wear. And I'm gonna use a different finger and go into Funny Girl. It's a little harder for me to control where I'm putting it at the inner corner with my finger, and I do, oh look, I did it already. Mm. Oh, and I had a little bit of fallout out here. Well, yeah, but anyway, just to show you what that looks like when you get the shimmer and how it causes some creasing. So I have a fan brush that I use to brush away any fallout. All right, let's go in with the eyeliners. For the upper lash line, I used Essence Extreme Lasting Waterproof Eye Pencil in Butt First Espresso. So first I'm gonna tight line the upper water line. 
I'm going to use my BK Beauty Precision 208 angled brush. Look how tiny that little guy is. And I'm just going to use it to pull out the eyeliner at the outer corner to make myself a little wing out there. And that gives me like a little template that shows me where to do my upper liner. So I'm just going to use the same pencil to do the uppers. Do a little wing, connect it over. And that just kind of lifts up the outer corner of my eye so that instead of being more downturned like this, it tends to have more of an uplift, which of course looks more youthful. For the bottom waterline, I'm going to use the same Essence eye pencil, but in the color uh, Rockin' Taupe. So I'm just going to do my bottom waterline with that and also about the outer third underneath my lashes. I'm just going to give that a little smudge too. For my mascara today, I'm going to use L'Oreal Unlimited Mascara in the little genie bottle, and it has the bendable wand. I feel like my eyelashes are finally starting to come back because I had used a lash growth serum that really doesn't wasn't doing that much for them, and I've just started back with my Revital Lash, which is my favorite, and I feel like my lashes are finally starting to grow again. For the lips, I had on my usual Urban Decay 24-7 lip liner in Naked. Uh oh, that needs sharpening. And I fill in the entire lip. And the lipstick I had on that day was my Hourglass Girl Lip Stilo in Activist, one of my favorites. I've been wearing this a ton lately. I feel like it's just a little bit brighter than a plain nude. Who is it? May I enter? Yes? I have an early Mother's Day present for you. You do? Can you guess which hand it's in? Um, it's in your left hand. <gasps> Mimosas! Yay! Good thinking! Whee! <laughs> I will put it in the fridge. Thank you. Let's let the hair out. I kind of like those hair clips. Oh, they're, they're so cute when it's in. So there's the finished look. I think it is youthful and glowy and dewy and it just is so skin-like and natural looking. It's perfect for these times, but yet you look a little bit better than you actually are and maybe even a little younger than you actually are. So I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope if you're trying to recreate this look at home that you have success with it. So if you enjoyed the video and found it helpful and informative, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I think Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.